This is the second half of Bass Tunes on KUCI 8.9 FM in Irvine. We are currently running at 199.7 watts. Normally, I don't do the readings, so we got it nicely. All right. I will, of course, I've been Arian Salimi. If you want to check me out on any social medias, real quick, just going to plug it in now and then also at the end of the show. I'm going to do that too. If you're listening right now, I have an Instagram and a whole website dedicated to my stuff. So if you want to follow the show on Instagram, it is B A S E D. T U N E S K U C I. And if you want to check out my website, it is B A S E D A R I dot C O M. Basedari.com, Base Tunes K U C I on Instagram. Mortal Kombat 1. Oh, I should probably wrap that up. I like that cover. It's heavier, it's a little bit more grungier. I'm probably going to end up watching The Crow. Uh, personally, I really watch movies with, you know, my partner. <laughs> Uh, she wants to wa- she thinks that'd be a good idea for us to watch because I like a lot of the music on that stuff, you know, and I've seen a lot of good movies that I might eventually talk about, you know, with her on the air. I don't know how comfortable she'd feel about that, but you know, having her on sort of stuff I've seen, you know, I've seen like the, cr- not the crow, uh, I've seen do the right thing. That was my suggestion, uh, my suggestion, but she wanted me to watch La Haine. Uh, we watched do the right thing, Spike Lee. I might compare the two eventually. I personally thought Do the Right Thing was more fun for me, but what do you expect? I mean, fun's a bit of an oxymoron. It's a bit of a... Both of them are pretty dark movies. Anyways. And I saw uh, Black Klansman, which I thought was really good. Another Spike Lee movie. Now I'm like, ooh, Spike Lee's cool. And then I realized, ah, Spike Lee may not... And apparently Spike Lee doesn't do a ton of good things in terms of, like, his uh, creative output. Like, how good quality they are. So, yeah. Anyways, second half of the show, right? Mortal Kombat 1. Okay, I had a little bit of a discussion about this some amount of weeks ago, some amount of seasons ago. I don't remember, right? This is around the time Street Fighter VI comes out. This is in, like, June, I think. And I'm like, wow, I love Street Fighter VI. And, you know, I fell out of it a bit. Uh, I think it's also partially because I left the country, and then I came back, and I'm like, eh, video games and Starfield. And I'm like, I love Starfield. And I'm still playing it a bit. But Mortal Kombat 1 comes out. And I was honestly... This isn't really going to be a discussion about the game itself too much because, one, I mean, it's not even out for the vast majority of people. It's the premium edition thing. I'll talk about that in a second. And, two, you know, I just wanted to talk about a little bit of the dilemma I had in terms of the purchasing of this game, and it's not one that I've had yet, you know? So, of course, 2020 or something, right? We have the new ninth generation of game consoles. And, by the way, this is video games talk, so, you know, hope you stay a lot, stay on, right? Please, you know, if you all don't like video games, You'll enjoy my ranting about this because it'll be fun, right? I'll put the energy in. Don't worry, listeners. I'm here for you. Okay. So, 2020 comes around and the ninth generation of consoles, right? You got the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series, X or S, because there's the X, which is the one of the disc and the really powerful 4K one, and the S, which is like $300. The PS5 and the Xbox, the big ones, are $500, which is a good bit of money, but for the power they're packing and how much the... A lot of the graphics card market and things like that were, especially around the time of the pandemic, right? I don't think they're as much of an issue nowadays, but they still might be. You know, it ain't that big of a deal, right? Uh, but I'll tell you something, right? I'll tell you something nice, and I'll tell you something real. I really haven't had a need to buy a console. You know, one, they're 500 bucks. Two, I dropped a, a similar amount of money like that on a whole graphics card because I have a really good graphics card now. It's not the... The, the 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 latest generation because I don't have a 4080 because that's extremely expensive and a 4090 is extremely extremely expensive even though it's apparently really odd but I'm like nah bro I got a 40 like I don't care I have a 40 I mean I have a 3080 I'm happy with that I sincerely do not care you know I'm having fun with that so what are you gonna do right I'll tell you something else too right you end up, sorry, one of the main reasons why I never really felt a need, aside from how expensive they were, was because of a lot of the games, one, I didn't think I had much of an interest in, and two, the sort of new policies that a lot of these game makers, like these console distributors are doing for their sort of exclusive games, right? A lot of games are, of are of course, multi-platform, which means they can be on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever you want to call it. But a big thing with the last generation, and this one, of course, is the sort of exclusivity market. Mostly on Sony's end with the PlayStation. They make these big single-player cinematic experiences, you know? You got The Last of Us Part 1 and 2. 
well, The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part 2, and then The Last of Us Part 1, which is a reimagining remake of The Last of Us, the first one for the PlayStation 5 with the same engine. Why am I even saying that? It doesn't matter. Anyways, you know, you got Horizon Zero Dawn, and then Horizon Forbidden West, Spider-Man, and then Spider-Man Miles Morales, the exaggerated swagger of the video game. And I mean... Other than that, I feel like the output's kind of slowed down. I mean, what do we have right now? We have uh, Miles Morales. No, we have Spider-Man 2. Uh, I don't really remember any other ones, right? We have some new acquisitions on the line, right? Sony buys Bungie. They're, they might have some exclusive things like that. But Microsoft ends up buying Bethesda, right? So they're like, okay, well, Starfield. That's our new exclusive game. It was originally going to be for PlayStation. Nope. We're going to put it on Xbox and PC only so you can have to buy it. How many people are going to buy a new console for it? I don't know, but apparently it's done really well because the huge Game Pass install base because it's been on day one Game Pass. I got on Game Pass 2, right? Which is a subscription service that you can pay. The other thing is this. All of the new Xbox exclusives are for PC as well because you can just buy them through the Xbox app because Windows is Microsoft and PC gaming is Windows, right? I mean, computers is Windows, right? You're not going to really be PC gaming on a Mac like that. Not really. So that's one thing. You're like, okay, that's the problem. I thought, oh, maybe the Sony games. Uh, no, sir, ma'am, whatever gender you identify as. Sony's doing that too. A year or something after release. Oh, we're going to put the new ones on. Basically for everything. We thought it was just going to be for the older stuff. No, the new Horizon Forbidden West game that came out and the expansion, those are coming to PlayStation 5 in a bit. It's been leaked. Spider-Man 2 is probably going to come. All these exclusives are probably going to get PC ports because of how, well, I guess the market's pretty good, right? Capcom sort of switched over to having PC be a priority with things like uh, Street Fighter 6 has an excellent PC port, for example. A lot of these platformers are doing that. Here's the problem, and it comes to Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat 1... Not the original from 1992, the new one. I know it's confusing. That game is on the ninth generation of consoles only. That includes PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Also on the Nintendo Switch, but I don't count that. Because it's a Nintendo Switch and it'll run terribly. Right? But. It also has a PC port, but the PC port has always been an afterthought. And it's been getting better, but it might have been an afterthought. Because the Switch and PC versions were are outsourced to a different studio to port them over and handle patches. I had Mortal Kombat 11 on PlayStation 4, and then I bought it on PC. Or it might have been vice versa. Anyways, I had it on PlayStation. No, yeah, I think I bought it on PS4 first, so I could play multiplayer. And then I bought all the DLC and expansions, and... You know, don't tell Warner Brothers, but there was a certain series of unlock tools that you can use without any real fan repercussion, things like that, that makes you able to just, shall we say, get all the unlockables without having to spend hundreds and hundreds of hours of meaningless tasks doing the Towers of Time because MK11 was absurdly grindy. Anyways, you end up getting to the point, I just think, like, is this going to be worth it? Because I'm spending $70 on this game because now it's 70 bucks. I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy a PS5 for this. Then, you know, the time has finally rolled around. And I've thought, you know, and I've debated with friends, just people, loved ones, whoever. And I'm like, is it really worth it to spend $500 on a console and then spend 70 more on the game? And then have to spend like $10 a month, maybe even more for the online multiplayer because you have to pay to play multiplayer. Now on the Xbox could have been cheaper the xbox would have been cheaper but i could already play all the xbox games on my uh shall we say on my playstation i mean on my pc and it's not like i really want to have like a tv box because like i already have a tv right next to my computer i could plug it into the tv and whenever i want to play video games i don't really want to sit i don't i don't really do that like lying down in bed playing console games anymore because i like the mouse and keyboard for 99 percent of games Mortal Kombat not being one of them because it's a fighting game. But, like, whenever I plugged an MK11 onto the TV, it's had that weird stuttery thing because, of course, it's a PC game. And my TV is a little old. It doesn't have the proper, like, uh, V-Sync, G-Sync, whatever for that. So, you know, you can have some goofy things with that. But the Xbox Series S would have been, like, 300 bucks. The game would have been 70 You might have been able to play it anywhere because they did it for MK11 where if you buy it on Xbox, if you it was on Game Pass. But let's say you buy it on uh 
Xbox, you could probably play it on PC through their app. Hasn't happened yet. But, that's besides the point. And also, the Game Pass, because I was paying for, I guess, Game Pass, there's like one tier, the highest tier or whatever, which I, I switched down to the PC tier, because there's no point. I don't have an Xbox anymore. Well, I have an Xbox One, but I don't use it, right? And it's like, I don't have the new one. Anyways, it would have been cheaper overall. But then I was like, nope, you know what? I found a website. I got a legitimate key for it. I got it for the same price for the premium edition, which means you can play five days early, but it's 500 It's not 500 It's It's $100, which is one of the newer things with games nowadays, right? They're like, okay, you can spend $100 because the game's like, oh, it's 70 bucks a launch. You want to get five days early access or whatever, you can pay 100 bucks. I've fallen for it twice at this point, and I'm serious with you, okay? Diablo 4, because I, because every time it's because I'm bored at this certain time, and uh, you know what? Eh, it's like an extra 30 bucks, whatever. I'll toss it in, because I'm a working man. I get money, even though I don't haven't been getting scheduled all that much because of, I don't know, maybe just my schedule's weird. It's gonna be even harder uh, this current quarter. But that's besides the point. You end up get like <sighs> they're jipping me, man. They're really getting me. They're really getting me. But I bit the bull and I'm playing it. And you know what? It's interesting. The PC port is all right. It's an all right port. I've heard a lot of issues about the PC port with Mortal Kombat 11 and X. But I haven't really gotten as many issues with, I guess, MK1. I don't know. I mean, 11 I bought after it came out. So it wasn't like immediately after non-launch day or whatever. But, you know, I'm just playing through the story mode right now and the single player. And I'll play some multiplayer. Uh, my first match, I got a, a hundred ping, and then the next one was sixty, and then the next one was thirty. So more people are hopping on. Maybe here's the thing. All right, I didn't get to the main crux of the point because I was rambling. Crossplay. That's the biggest one. I need crossplay, or else I'm gonna be very upset. And they said, "Oh, crossplay is coming in the future," because they haven't done it yet. Is crossplay going to happen between PC and console? I hope so, but they might not be able to. But I hope so. And I'll tell you one thing. I have a little bit of faith in the architecture and infrastructure. One of the strangest things, though, is uh, your username is in a totally different font from the rest of the game. It's weird. But you have a little icon that says what platform you're on. I've played with people who bought it on Epic Games. I wouldn't really call that cross-play because you're just buying it on different platforms. And I assume you're going to be using... They have their own online service. They're not using the Epic Games one, even though they're using... Um, they use the uh, Epic Games engine, like a really modified version of Unreal Engine 4 now. Even though 5 is out, but I guess I wanted to do 4. Anyways. I haven't... I play... I'm like 70-something percent through the story. And I'm not going to spoil the story. But you know what's funny? Everyone who was super... Con they're like, what's going on with the story? Like, what's it going to be? Who's the new villain? And honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of rolled my eyes at it, but I was also kind of correct... From like a lot of the leaks were kind of correct of what it's going to be. It's kind of crazy and just, just, you know. Long story short, it's a bunch of weird timeline stuff, which has basically been the name of the game since uh, MK9 in 2011, right? It's a bunch of weird story stuff with timeline switching, and it's and it's more of that. And it ties in pretty interestingly well to the ending of Eleven's DLC Aftermath. Where, long story short, you have a sort of split path with how you want the game to end. And, you know, depending on your choice, I mean, it, it kind of both makes it... They both kind of come into effect in the new one. That's all I'll say, right? If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But they're very coy about it. And I'm kind of like, are you kidding me? More... Like, more of this timeline stuff. And then certain characters sort of get their outcomes done the same way. And I'm like, oh, come on, really? But it's also kind of an interesting idea with the story. You know, my personal thought was this, right? My personal thought with how the story could go. Because a lot of timelines, it's in our blood. It's like certain things you cannot change. Certain aspects about people and timelines you cannot change. Because the guy who's the new keeper of time, he recreates the world and then relinquishes it to become the sort of demigod protector of Earthrealm like uh, my boy Raiden was. You know, I must consult with the Elder Gods, except he doesn't consult with the Elder Gods, right? It ends up being the case that, I guess, hmm, let me think here. 
ends up being the case. Let's see here, Luke Hanger. I don't know why I lost my train of thought for a second. Hope you're all enjoying the show right now. But the story is kind of convoluted, but it's like more fun, right? All the characters, a lot of more like the classic sort of ninja and fantasy stuff is back into play and not and less of the special forces military Johnny Cage's daughter and all that. Uh, Sonya's, Sonya and Kano aren't even in this game, which is kind of crazy to me. You know, interestingly enough, um, what was it? I believe that two characters, and it's weird because the game kind of feels rushed in a way because a lot of the quality of life features just aren't there. In terms of like, I don't know. It's like they're very hush about a lot of things until later. There's like a third mode called in like the third mode, which is usually like the crypt. You walk around this giant, you know, you go through this weird like uh, cavernous crypt of stuff and you can get like rewards like skins or concept art. And instead you just offer it to a shrine or you have to play this new invasion mode, which is interesting because it's sort of like a top down tabletop board game where you're like going through sectors and then you go through little fights with modifiers and it resets every season which is cool and there's new stuff every season that kind of ties into the ranked leagues which combat league is literally already online which is kind of crazy to me because the game just came out i don't think that's fair because no one knows how to play the game yet but i guess it doesn't matter anyways you know the fighting is pretty good the animations are of course they're, honestly i think street fighters are better at this point they've always been better but like street fighter sixes look really good but they're different, you know? MKs look more... They're smoother, but they're still more stiff. And Street Fighters look more fluid. There's more, like... MK looks more realistic than Street Fighter, but Street Fighter kind of caught up. But I'm not really a fan of the art style of Street Fighter because it's weird, like, shine to everything. And, like, this weird mix of, like, sort of oversized proportions, but, like, realistic lighting, but the realism just isn't as much as MK1 now. But the graphics of MK1 just are weird because, like, they're better in a lot of ways. But they're, like, a lot more stylized in terms of lighting and skin. But one character, and I've seen other people, he looks so realistic. And it's funny, too, because it's, like, the weird, one of the sorcerer guys. And his eyes are bugging out the entire time. He's, like, he's just a goo- He looks goofy and, it's like, tweaking the entire time. But at the same time, like, his skin looks really realistic. And he looks like a real human being. And it's almost frightening. You know? It's like, uh... I don't know if the... I think the main thing is that I don't think they used face models as much for a lot of the main characters. Like, Liu Kang looks more stylized. Like, a lot of the character designs in Eleven, to me, were really good. But it's like they went back on a lot of them for MK1 in terms of, like, it seems like they modeled more of them from scratch than just uh, getting a real person to scan their face, right? And some of them look different. And, of course, some characters just look totally different. Like, uh, one of the queens is, like, just full-on Asian now. She didn't really look that way. But makes sense because of her daughters because she was the mother of two daughters. And, you know, she wants to look more like the daughters, right? Things like that. It's interesting. I am curious about the two characters that were leaked that were basically sort of now they're told, okay, they're in the new DLC pack, uh, even though they just aren't. Apparently they haven't done. I mean, I think they when those characters are basically done, a lot of their work is basically finished because right? you fight them in the story mode. and They're basically fully playable. Right. And they have all their moves and stuff like that. But their uh, DLC, it's not perfect. Right. But then I read somewhere that, like, they haven't basically gotten any work started on the two guest characters, which is uh, Peacekeeper and Homelander and Omni-Man. And some of them, and they have, like, models for them, but that might be it. The voice acting might not go through because they haven't done a lot of the work on that. They haven't coded anything, which is fine. Like, they're coming out later this year. I mean, obviously, they try and get the game out. But, like, the whole actor strike is going on now with the Screen Actors Guild, and they might not consent to doing that you know it's just it's kind of strange right i don't know now i'm thinking about that uh new teenage the tmnt movie that came out and people got mad at mr beast for doing a promotion even though he was contractually obligated to mr beast oh i love mr beast youtube video i love mr beast youtube oh can you please give me a million dollar jimmy jimmy beast 
I'm going to say one thing, and this might be the greatest uh, bridge burn of all time. No. I went into the uh, grocery store the other day, and I saw, like, the YouTuber section, basically, in my grocery store, because they had Prime Hydration, and they had Mr. Beast Feastable Chocolate Bar. I like Prime, actually. I tried it a few times. I've had it a few times in my house. I kind of like it. You know, it's not that many calories. It looks pretty, uh, the art style is good. You know, <clears throat> Some people have to like. How do you? They're like, how do you like that sort of bright colors? And I'm like, dude, like it's a solid bright color with bold font. It's literally my show. I don't know how I wouldn't like it in the first place, right? But man, those Feastables bars are so small for how much they cost at my store. Like it's crazy. They're cheaper than like I forgot the brand of them, but like they're like my they have like my girlfriend's favorite chocolate or something. She told me when we were at the store, and it's like. The one that's like, I guess not using like, like bad labor or something like that. You know the things that she'd like because she's, she's very much so conscious about, you know her ethics and the like stuff like rec- the environment and you know recycling things like that. A lot of things like that, which I've enjoyed because it's sort of taught me to be a little bit better about that. You know, it's kind of here's the most smallest thing in the world. I literally, for the one time, and I know this is really not a big deal at all, but I was like, oh, I thought about it for a bit, which I wouldn't have before. Uh, Amazon has this thing called Amazon Day, where if you order shipping, it's like, oh, we'll give you a little discount. It's better for the CO2, because they try to get as many deliveries on this one day, so it's not like as many packages at once, as many trips. The only reason why I really did that, of course, is because I was buying a new uh, headphone jack adapter for my Sennheisers to the studio, and of course... It was pricey, but I hope it's good because I hope it's the same one that came with my Sennheisers because I don't know where they are, and they're really good because sc- it's screwed on. And it was perfect, and I've never had an adapter that good because a lot of them kind of just are terrible. Like the ones you got at Best Buy or something like that, they're terrible, which is not good for, you know, show hosts, KCI or anywhere else. I don't know who else has, like, the quarter-inch stuff. I assume more people do than don't, right? But that's besides the point. <sighs> it's been a really interesting run. I hope this show has been interesting. I'm going to try and do the two the twofer thing more often. I kind of do want to give my thoughts on MK1 story once I finish it because I'm kind of seeing like the, oh, oh geez, are you really kidding me with a lot of this stuff? But, like, I don't want to spoil it. Maybe I'll announce spoiler alert before I do that. Um, What else? Let's see here. Hmm. I think I've got an opportunity to cover a couple of shows. So at some point, the next quarter, which I don't know what I'm going to be calling it. It's probably going to be season six because it's been season five technically, even though it's the base hour. The color is going to be like a shade of orange because of the pumpkin spice latte, which as a Starbucks employee, I don't like it. It's too sweet and overpowering, too artificial. It's just this weird texture and taste to it. I, guess I like the taste of pumpkin, though, like pumpkin bread and things like that. Mm-mm. Sign me up. But, you know, orange, you know, pumpkin spice latte. Oh, can I get that? I don't even know if it's, like, that much of a meta anymore with, the, with like, the stereotypes. Ooh, it's a tasty little treat for myself. Maybe it's better hot. I always got, I got it ice because it was getting really hot. Anyways, I mean, maybe next time I work I'll get it because, you know, as a worker I get a free drink for my shift, which is very cool. Um, Yeah, that's season five. We're going to end up probably I'm going to be attempting to cover shows. Uh, for the station, we got some giveaways planned, right? We got some giveaways. We got some giveaways planned for the next couple of months. And uh, I and my uh, sort of mentor, whoever, as marketing director, helping me do that as uh, we're sort of spearheading that. You'll probably end up seeing that on uh, KUCI socials. You might end up hearing it on the air, too, right? I'm not sure how that's going to work, but, you know, more giveaways and stuff. And they're pretty good ones, too. So I hope you guys enjoy that, you know, from me to you, I guess, from the station to you, whoever, right? I'll probably uh, plug it in this in the show whenever I get the chance to. But I do intend to see if I can cover one of the shows. There's one specifically I want to do, but it's they gave, but it's probably the most sold out. So we'll hope, we'll ask and be polite. Because here's the thing, right? Just always ask, just always ask if you're in a position like that. Because I want to, I need to get those credentials. I want to cover. I got to cover stuff more. Because I didn't realize it's like other ho- show hosts, like uh, who is it? I think Chris, the six o'clock slot. This in the cut, you'll see, you'll hear him in a little bit. Lag radio which I enjoy. Also, great guy. So, like, listen to Lag Radio after at 6 o'clock if you're still around. If you have any time listening to KCI, check out Lag Radio, right? He's a 
playing and talking about video games music, playing video game music, talking about it. A little bit more of an interesting mix of discussions. I think he said he might be doing Starfield, so if you want to hear more, I guess, proper in-depth talk about and some music related to Starfield, you'll be able to hear his show at 6, which would be cool. Of course, uh, there's going to be a bit of a 30-minute gap between shows, which I think hopefully will get resolved next quarter, so unfortunately I won't have much leeway in the studio, but that'll be fun, right? You'll have another host right after me, but until then... Uh, you'll have a little bit of smooth jazz, and then you're gonna hear Anne her Operation Community Stimulus. She might have an, you might have somebody in live right now. She might not, but she's always been a great lady, very hardworking, uh, just a very cool person to talk to a lot. She's doing a lot of stuff all the time, so even if it's not somebody new, you'll always hear about some interesting thing. She's some person she's talking to, or you know something new that she's up to, helping people out. Just, really kind helpful person from the things i've talked to her in the studio about so make sure to check in that i think it's about it in terms of the show i've had water as well so pardon me the voice a little iffy but hey you know it's been an interesting little show i like to critique myself live on air because it's fun to do that i think we're going to keep this format this uh half and half format with a little song in between gotta think of better songs better artists to do that are smaller because i don't know it's like i feel a little goofy about the whole pantera thing but hey i love the band i don't care uh, Reinventing the Seal is cool. Listen to that Badge song all the way through. It's really, really fun, in my opinion. It's got this nice groove. To... You know, especially if you're a big fan of the punk, a bit of the anti-authority type of thing, which I like and I don't like. I mean, I don't know. I'm a bit of a It's cool. All right. You're going to enjoy that. Also, Poison Idea might be a good one to check out, too. Right, I don't know if we have. I don't know if we've talked about them, and not on this show. I might talk about their album because it looks really interesting. Yeah, might be also pretty front loaded like Pantera's. Is. Actually, it's 